Hi all my fuzzy and non-fuzzy friends. Vice uploaded a video about furries. Before I watched the video, I had a look at the rating and I thought, oh, that's not good at all. But I wanted to have a look at it and tell you my personal opinion on some points, on some scenes. And although the original video is about 30 minutes, I don't want to talk about everything unless this video will become so super long and I don't want it to be super long. I will take the most important points and well comment on them and that's it. I hope you will like it. It's something new and I want to give it a try. Back when I first started fur shooting, I brought it up with my grandma because I wanted her to help me sew. And I was like, hey, can you can you help me um, sew a bodysuit? I'm making uh, like basically a mascot costume. And she freaked out because she had thought I was joining this community of like weird people that would get together at meets and all just like get into a, a group fuck pile. That's a problem why so many furries do not want to come out. You never actually came out and said, I'm a furry. No, I, I don't remember making a big deal it of it. was drawing pictures of it at first, and then eventually you started saving it. Oh no, not another cliche furry t-shirt. I personally have nothing against furry t-shirts. I also do have nothing against slogan t-shirts, but please, Wear them in your home or at conventions, but not in public, in, at office, or anywhere else. Please, please do not do that. It's really embarrassing. I slowly got more into the, the scene, so to say, just because of the people. And I eventually just went, fine, I give up. I'm a furry. I'm one of these guys, you know, they all seemed really, really cool, so I kind of just blended in. Hey, his fursuit is really fluffy. And yeah, the people are a really positive factor in the furry fandom, but there are a lot of furries who are very full of envy and hatred and everything about that, especially in the German furry fandom. So be careful, not every furry is 100% friendly and wants to be a friend of yours. I'm not gonna lie, uh, partying is the number one thing that most furries like to do. Really? I know a lot of furries who are not into partying. The furry population here was lackluster. There were not many furs. I thought, I'm gonna try. I've seen YouTube videos of- No, 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 no. He did not do that. Why? Why? Hey you, furry. Me? There's something stereotypical with a ball. What shall I do with the ball? I don't know. I thought furries like balls. Ugh. Oh. At least these fursuits are not cringy at all. A lot of people feel furry has to be a certain thing, but in my experience, furry is animation, it's comics, it's cosplay, uh, it's all of these other weird aspects all sort of knotted into a big messy ball. What is that? Oh my god. Okay, okay, go on. In 2000, significant point in furry history is when the CSI episode, Fur and Loathing, comes out and sort of paints the fandom as this like crazy sex fetish cult, which really, really diminishes the reputation of the fandom. Oh yeah, this episode definitely is a reason for our bad reputation, or oh, one of the bigger reasons for our bad reputation. You can not like it, that's one thing, but actually being outwardly cruel to somebody, you're being like, oh, you're a freak because of it, it's just like, just back off. I'm not hurting you. Why do all these interviewed people have such a strange haircut? I mean, most furries have a normal haircut, even underneath the fursuit. His personality is basically what I'd want myself to be, so he'd be less anxious, just more of a chill, laid-back kind of character versus being, like, high anxiety like I am. Um, you also look a little anxious. It's just, like, people dancing, getting drunk. It's just a regular party scene with uh, some fursuiters and other weird furry things sprinkled on top. Okay, this location really reminds me of the CSI episode. It's not a big difference. It's dark, you can't see much. I don't know, really, I don't know. But it's not a place for a fursuit dance. And I know that I've been to a lot of fursuit dances and they really look different. I don't know whether this video shot was a good idea. Oh, I know I'm human. I know I'm 100% human. It's just, I wish I was a cat. <laughs> I think Vice also demanded that, just like with the fox and the ball. Something about furry, you anthropomorphize everything. You start to sort of see everything as having its own little life. And there we have strange haircuts again. And then there are the people who like identify very strongly spiritually with the the, the type of creature they have made their avatar to be. It's more than just role play. 
yeah, but why does everyone need to own a fursuit? Nowadays, more than 50% of the furries do not own even one fursuit. So it's not typical for furries to have a fursuit. The fear that somehow it will, well, not somehow, there's been proof that it's happened. You'll lose your job just because you're now associated with being a furry. Yeah, Yeah, I see that point. My old employer also found out I'm a furry and I'm a YouTuber, and he wanted to bully me for that. Uh, I don't let myself be bullied, but he tried to. And another cringy fursuit again. Yay! To be honest, I have had sex with my tail and my head, but it's uncomfortable because it gets in the way. You're like huffing and puffing is... <laughs> Why do they tell us? Um, I guess it's called yiffing. <laughs> oh, you. We tried it, we're not really that into it, but we're still new into the fandom, so you never know. It can be done. It's not my cup of tea. I'm not that kind of furry, and I know a lot of people that aren't that kind of furries. <laughs> <laughs> you can try that, that's no problem. But why do you have to tell the cameraman? Why? Why? Does the audience really need to know that you tried to do fursuit sex? So I had a very masculine character, so uh, that kind of it helped me realize more of the trans link. With a, with a fursuit, you can pat it out to have breasts or abs or whatever. Meanwhile, you have the opposite. I actually don't want to be judgmental, but I think fursuits with breasts are a little cringy and embarrassing. I like to talk to cats, because I talk to cats like I talk to my kids, very softly. Although I'm not a cat, I also talk with cats the way she does. And I think that's, that's pretty normal, isn't it? I've been depressed since I was about 12, and it's always, try this medication and then it doesn't work, try this medication and it, I don't feel right when I take it, so I stop it. But when I put on my fursuit, like, just when I put on my fursuit, I feel so much happier. It's like a medicine that you just put on. Yeah, fursuits and the furry fandom do really help against depression and sadness. It also helped me when I had a hard time. I don't know, maybe it also helped you when you had a hard time. You can. Surely tell me down below if you want to, you don't need to, just if you want to. I wanted to create sort of a safe haven where people wouldn't have to feel alone. I grew up alone, it was fine for me, but not everybody has that strength. So I thought the best way to kind of rectify that was to get as many people with things in common together as possible, as quickly as possible. And, and it worked. Yeah, the furry fandom can be like a family, but there are some pretender friends. Pretender? Because there are a lot of furries who are your friends or try to be your friends, but only for a short time. There are a lot of short time friendships in the furry fandom. I've experienced that several, a lot of times, unfortunately. Yeah. No, she destroys the magic. Why did she do that? I, I think she also did it before and I didn't notice, but why? Why? Why did she do that? No! If you look back in fandom history, people were calling Trekkies weird. Trekkies were the weird thing. Being huge in a Star Trek or huge in a Star Wars was freaky. Now that's like casual. I think Trekkies still are ridiculed sometimes. Okay, time for my final thoughts. If I had to give this video a thumbs up or down, I would rather give it a thumbs down, and I will tell you why. I think the first 10 minutes are a little embarrassing. They would have needed some people who look more normal than these people who are interviewed. Because everyone who watches this video, and who's maybe not a furry, can think, okay, these are normal people, I'm a normal person too. Okay, furry is nothing abnormal, it's not a fetish, it's just some normal kind of hobby. And that's what people should think about furry. I think Vice did not manage to portray exactly that. And it sometimes seems like the typical furry fan member has problems to be socially accepted or to integrate into today's society. Especially the meow and the licking balls scene are really cringy. Wow, nothing for me, I guess. And why? Please tell me why. Do they talk so openly about having sex in a fursuit? That's nothing the viewers, the audience, the subscribers, nothing, anyone, someone... Ugh, I'm missing the words. I do not want 
to hear about that. Hey, we've come to an end of this video. I hope you like it. I hope you're having a lot of fun. I hope you share my opinion. You don't have to, really. You don't have to. That's just my opinion on this video. Although I think the Vice video could have turned out better. I don't know if they tried to make the best of it and wait, hey, it's 30 minutes. It's better than just two cringy minutes or whatever. I hope you're having a nice rest of a day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it. Give it a thumbs up. What's actually the same, but <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm a little, I'm a little goofy <laughs> today. Yeah. Subscribe to my channel if you've liked the video. On the right, you can get to two more videos. Have a nice day, time, and whenever you're watching this video. See ya. Bye.